Welcome to the worst nightmare of all. Reality. Explore the lesser-known stories of our unknown world. Join the pursuit of the paranormal with Ash and Greg. Welcome to this week's episode um, where we're going to be talking all things paranormal. So how are you doing, Ash? I'm doing good. So getting over my uh, two-hour incident from last week. Yes. <laughs> still, think, still thinking about it. <laughs> I'm still thinking about it as well. Questioning okay. whether I actually saw it or not. <laughs> well, something happened for definite because I've I, we all heard that video clip. Um, where it says you talking about a wild chihuahua <laughs> <laughs> of all animals, and it is something I've been discussing um, with my wife as well. I'm saying, out of all the dogs or all the animals that you could see in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the night, a chihuahua would not have been up on the li- <laughs> up on the list. It probably would have been right near the bottom, along with like fish and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, it's bonkers. It's- absolutely bonkers and i know we we talked about it and said uh, you could understand it if it's a like a gun dog or a working dog something like that or something that's probably quite wild but chihuahua although they're probably quite vicious <laughs> yeah. little things yeah so <laughs> yeah i've got a pug and that's got little dog syndrome <laughs> completely and it's just savage little thing but yeah no so what have you been up to since your events at Rendlesham, <laughs> anything exciting? Uh, no, I just uh, planning for the UFO conference we've got in October. Yeah, uh, it's taken up all the time. There's a lot, so much going into it that I just didn't realise. What date is that again? Remind me. The Saturday, the 9th of October. There's only limited tickets left, so if anybody does want to come, uh, get tickets at www.ufoidentified.co.uk forward slash minicon. Cool. Cool. That was a nice little plug you worked in there. <laughs> that wasn't even planned. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> cool. So you've you've settled back and did you have you reviewed all the the footage and stuff? Uh, like no, I still got the when we did the final night before all that. I mean I should really in case we hear anything on that, but I've not reviewed yeah. reviewed the audio recordings. We've not reviewed the two camera recordings off the night we were in when this report is the last night yeah. somewhere. Uh, that's on sale on the to-do list, which might be the time when you actually find something, considering what happened afterwards. But yeah, yeah, definitely. We'll see, we'll see. Cool, cool. So, uh, my last week, apart from a few vehicle-related issues that I've had in last week, um, last weekend, uh, as as people might know, I'm uh, also part of a paranormal group, and we had the privilege of speaking to a family. I'll keep the details vague um, at this point, <clears throat> um, but they have a something happening in their house, right. um, and the reason why this is this like, prevalent or um, relevant this this week is because we're going to talk about um, a slightly unknown poltergeist case, and this actually is a similar type thing. So um, the the people that I spoke to there a couple uh, in a previous house the the female um, who's also a mum she experienced things um, weird happening in a previous house she found out later on that in the loft of the house uh, or in the attic that the previous owner had actually committed suicide Oh, which wow. she didn't know till after she moved out of the house. She, she was going up into the the attic. A light bulb was like increasing and just blew all the time. Um, and just a few weird things happening. So she moved out, moved in with her now husband, and um, it appears this thing has followed her. This potentially a man has followed her, um, spirit man, um, because we were asked to come and speak to the husband because they thought the the husband had something attached to him because every time he was in the house um weird things were happening and when he was out of the house things weren't happening but through talking to the couple 
the lady explained about this previous house um, and the fact that it only happens when she's on her own in the house nothing happens when he's on his own in the house nothing happens when they're both in the house weird stuff happens and when they're out of the house weird stuff happens so okay what 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 weird stuff happens so uh, an example of when they're both out of the house so they're out of the house they've had a few weird things happen so i'll rewind a little bit so they've the house is a new build house three story uh generally the new builds are quite warm houses like i've got a new build myself and uh, the insulation's pretty good in them so they, they tend to be a bit warmer yeah, i notice yeah. it's a bit warmer than our previous house and um but the top floor is there's a bathroom and whatnot it's used as the youngest daughter's bedroom initially uh very cold at the top usually the top of the house is quite warm because it heat, heat rises all yeah I, I used to have a top floor apartment it's never yeah. had the heating on because yeah, yeah a... definitely comes up yeah. the heat comes everybody up. was helping you out from below yeah. yeah so always cold and then the daughter's bedroom it was sort of normal temperature and then about the last six months started being cold all the time heating on cold and we've had quite a warm year this year it's been fairly mild um we've had some hot spells but generally it's not been that cold sort of the last no, six no, months it's, it's been right no. Um, so the daughter has taken photographs in her like selfies and, and whatnot. She, the daughter, just for context, is a 15 year old, 16 year old now. Um, taking photos, selfies in her bedroom, and in the background, and I saw these photos, are what appears to be a person, like a shadow of a person. Oof. And so we haven't received those photos officially or at all through the group just yet. Um, but if we do and when I can share them, I'll I'll send them over and I'll put them on the page. But at the moment, it's, it's early days because they just want to find out what's happening. Yeah. So other things that are happening in the house, uh, vases smashing doors, opening and closing. Um, so the door, so new builds... When they you've got new carpets in and whatnot, the doors are quite tough to to open and close. Sometimes when you get a new carpet in the house, yeah, yeah. So these doors are are quite stiff. The doors are just closing and opening. Um, they they hear doors slamming. Typical sort of haunting stuff. Um, and it was through talking to the couple that we found out about the previous house, but also the fact that the daughter's experiencing stuff. And the elder daughter who's moved out, she's in her 20s. When she was 16, she started seeing stuff. And she's experiencing stuff in her house now as well. So a lot of weird stuff happening. Seeing these peop- this image in the photographs. Um, cold spots in the house. Cold room. So the dad, everybody's out. He's got like ring cameras, those kind of internet cameras, security cameras. Puts one in one corner of the room on like a chest of drawers looking at the whole of the the bedroom, daughter's bedroom. Um, is it work? Because his thoughts were, I'm going to check to see if it's, they've got cats. So I want to check to see if it's a cat causing some of this stuff because they knock things over, little shits cats can be. Um, so he puts puts the camera up, um, goes to work. That everybody's out. He gets an alert on his phone to say that there's movement detected in the bedroom. So he logs on, and it records like five, ten seconds worth of footage, so you can see what's going on. Uh, can't see anything in there. So I thought maybe it's a cat. Could be a cat just sort of jumped up somewhere. So goes back to work. A few seconds later, gets the alert again to say there's movement. He goes on to like the camera app, and the camera itself is facing the wall. And when he gets home, the camera's actually fallen over. So it's done a full 180. So it's pointing into the to corner of the room. Yeah. 
and then when he comes home it's knocked over obviously as i spoke to him and said you can't rule out a cat doing that potentially because cats play yeah. around with stuff so i've suggested to him to make sure that if he does it again that the doors are closed everything like that so it's as sterile of an environment as it can be um so that that's been happening as i say they've got cold spots in the house the daughter doesn't want to sleep in the bedroom understandable i don't think i would especially like you just seeing someone someone in a picture yeah (laughs) definitely Definitely. (laughs) and and when you see the photograph it's clear as day that it's somebody there. Wow. It's although it's it's fuzzy because it's slightly out of focus. It's definitely not the girl that's taking the photo. You can see it. It's it's clear. It's somebody I've sat on a bed or sort of. It's it's a weird photo. Um, and just to put this in context, we actually met in public in a public place, so we didn't go to the house. I haven't seen any of this live yet. Um. So, the other issues that are happening, like I say, when the husband's at work and the wife's on her own, nothing happens. Likewise, when she's out and he's in the house on his own, nothing happens. When they're both together, they, we're like the the mood sours. They start arguing. Um, he said he he can ring her on the way home from work and say, "I'm coming home. I'll be home shortly." And he's got a job that requires him to um, take notice of things, um, like a protection type role. Right. So he's a big chap as well, like solid, solid guy, uh, really nice guy. But so he'll phone his wife, say, I'm on my way home. I'll see you in a bit. Everything's fine. He said, as soon as he walks over the threshold of the door, the mood darkens and whilst there's nothing specific he they start sort of bickering start rowing and there's an atmosphere between the the couple all the time until one of them goes out of the house or they both go out so they said there there'd be like just little things they said like something would annoy him slightly more than normal and then they would start arguing about stuff and obviously that causes a bit of tension so then they'll go out as a family and as soon as they walk and get in the car everything's back to normal it's like no atmosphere but as soon as they walk through the door the atmosphere is there again so I, I was trying to explain as as were the group i was with that um could find that if it's a male spirit or the the male that hung himself in the previous house has followed her he might be jealous yeah um, might not want um, a man or male figure, father figure in the house. Um, because the mum said, what happens if we split up? And I've got somebody new. I said, you'll probably find the same thing would happen again. It's, the f- it's not your husband. It's the fact that it's a man. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was food for thought for them. Um but yeah, very concerned couple. Um, daughter, young daughter as well. She was, I think, she's seven. So they've got three, three kids, and um, the young daughter also whispered something while we were there, and the dad was like, "I forgot, I forgot all about this." That the, the youngest daughter woke up one day and she had scratches all over her back. She sleeps on her own in the bedroom. I mean, that could be anything. Um, and she she said she was seven and she was saying I can sometimes feel like something's either stroking my hair or pulling my hair and she had like long long shoulder length hair so we've started a bit of a journey with them that they want to try and understand what what it is what what's causing yeah. it um, so as part of our investigations and sort of to, to let you know what we do so we're going to get them to start a diary of events so if you hear knocking on the wall what time was it what date was it what day of the week was it and also a comment will be i've asked them to keep a record of 
what the atmosphere in the house was like just beforehand or around the time this happening were you having an argument did it proceed to cause an argument or did it what happened mood wise in the house because they were saying that like I mentioned that they it creates an atmosphere of tension between the two of them the two adults in the house um, so we said look once we can start establishing if there's a pattern who's in the house that kind of stuff we can start to work on why why potentially there's something taking place um, so yeah this that was a bit of a, a strange thing. and I recorded the whole conversation so once I can get permission to use that maybe we'll be able to put that up as a an extended episode at some point uh, yeah uh, um, a, a raw unedited yeah, interview yeah with a couple going through quite a, a weird experience but Definitely. What uh, he said that the oldest daughter has stuff mm-hmm. happened and she lives yep. somewhere else. What stuff's happening with her? Same sort of things, hearing things, um, like a, a, a presence. There's um, strange act, like things happening in her house, like smash things, that kind of normal kind of, I say normal, normal kind of haunting sort of behavior. Um, does, does she have like, a partner or someone that's. Uh, didn't ask that question actually that's something I need to I'll need to go back and revisit however and you'll find this one quite interesting that she regularly goes on ghost hunts the, the family do anyway All right, okay. um, they go on organised events and the daughter the elder daughter was concerned that she might have brought something back with her from a, an investigation whether or not that has happened but they, okay. they all do go on ghost hunts and have been okay. on ghost hunts. So um, they they didn't come across as scared, but they were definitely concerned as to trying to find out what what's causing these issues. And we said, we, we just need to record a lot of stuff to begin with so we can just try and figure out what leads up to these things happening. Yeah. But definitely the the figure in the photograph, we all as a group saw that photograph and we were shown it, it was on a, a mobile. Um, definitely a strange, strange picture. So as soon as I as soon as I can get a copy of the photo, I'll send over to you Ash and see what you think. Because I know we, we we like to look at some of those sorts of photos. And, but yeah, so that was a very uh very strange but interesting sort of case that I'm involved or getting involved with as part yeah, of the sounds, paranormal sounds, uh, yeah. something to sort of yeah. look forward to I mean I guess yeah. look forward to and uh, yeah so I'll, I'll update as and when uh, when we get more information but the, the, we will start to sort of build a picture of things and then visit the, the couple's house just so if we can sense anything in the the team there um a couple how, of how did they that... sort of get in touch with you guys just... so we we've we've got our facebook page uh windrush valley paranormal um and like we do with the podcast we get people contacting us and saying we've got this happening what what is it or can you come and take a look at these weird things happening in our house it tends to be with the paranormal stuff a bit more direct rather than absolute nut jobs that we get on the podcast one <laughs> some of them are we do get some uh interesting contacts obviously in the on the podcast but we do get a lot of people that it's just completely out there but with the paranormal stuff they tend to be people that have got a genuine concern they want yeah. to find out what's happening um and yeah so that that's how they contact us um, so we've been in contact with them as a group over the last few weeks and said Look, let's let's meet up we had some decent weather recently we we're able and fortunate enough that we all met up at the same time um, yeah so hopefully we're going to be able to to help the family and uh, it, even just to try and find some kind of answers I think that's what they're after is to, what it is what's causing it yeah, um, yeah. before before anything gets too out of hand um i don't know if things are starting to escalate but things have definitely gone from sort of cold spots in the house to smashed vases and 
and whatnot, and then up to this picture being taken, which obviously would freak anybody out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A 15, 16 year old girl um, who's just taking social media selfies. So, yeah, yeah, tough times, tough times. And as I say, but because it's affecting the children a bit more than the adults, it's, it's definitely something that we're going to try and try and help them with. So I'll update as and when we get some more info on that. So that that was part of what I've been doing, um, and also looking into following on nicely to this poltergeist stuff that we've been. So poltergeist I find fascinating, the Enfield yeah. Enfield haunting and the poltergeist from the Enfield case is a particular favourite of mine, and I know we we've covered that off recently. Um, that was a really popular episode as well. Yeah, it was. And I, oh, it's just such a good, I say, story. It's a good account of an experience that took place in a normal house. And I think that's the scary bit out of all of this is it's a normal house. It's not some mansion that's half crumbling at the bottom of the street that nobody goes, like on It, if you've seen the new version yeah, of yeah. It. Yeah, yeah. Where they walk to this house and it's just like this house and you look at it and you go, fucked if I'm going in there <laughs> because that looks haunted. Yeah, oh, the cabin walk... in the woods. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Why would you even go there? And like, there's the film The Strangers where they've gone into this cabin in the woods and they get a knock on the door and somebody with like this mask on. It's like, what were you going to expect in the middle of the night? <laughs> a chihuahua. But, yeah, a chihuahua. <laughs> Although, if it's going to be out there on its own in the middle of the night, it's probably quite a good thing to have on the lead with you because it would probably defend itself if it was there, Ash. Yeah, if it was existed. <laughs> oh, man. I hope we got an idea it... for a film, Chihuahua in the Woods. <laughs> Imagine if it didn't exist and it was just in your head. Is that both of our both, both of our heads. Though. Yeah, both of your heads. It was, it was planted in both of us. I don't know. Oh, that'd, be, a, a that'd be even weirder, wouldn't it? It would be. I think someone would definitely be controlling it if that would happen. That would happen. Yeah, if that's exactly. what what's happened. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that's thoughts for uh, we, you heard that here first. So if anybody comes out with that as a film idea, we <laughs> we got to try and claim that. Yeah, I'll be suing. <laughs> so the yeah the Enfield Poltergeist. It's a typical house in a typical street, a typical city, London. Um, and then you've got like 30... And just, just, just to sorry, point on yeah. that is when you say yeah. London, um, I think obviously a lot of our listeners are American and international. Yeah. And when, you think, when I think of London, I think all oh, the city centre, the big uh, skyscrapers. Yeah. Yeah. The, like, the London in this is a sort of Greater London council Southern, state yeah. where it's like there's lots of houses tightly built together. Mm-hmm. So you got like, yeah. a big population all like in one area rather than like Yeah. Like, well, like people imagine London, I imagine the city of London rather than Yeah, bit these, like neighbor- York these neighborhoods. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Rather than like up upsta- more like down like I don't know, downtown New York, so more like um more like Brooklyn. Yeah. Sort of rather than like Yeah, Manhattan. upstate New York. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So yeah, we have terraced houses and the Enfield ones are like an end terrace house um on a typical street. Um Thirty East Drive is another one that um people go to as part of the you know, it's a very famous um place in Pontefract. That's a, like a semi detached house um on a housing development um built sometime post-war so a lot of these hauntings take place in houses that people live in rather than sort of mansions or old properties they're like normal yeah. houses and that that's the scary bit is it you could look out out of your house out of your window and see another house on your street and it could, could have weird shit happening in it yeah. so um so poltergeist and that is something that, that fascinates me. It always has. It freaked me out as a child. And it, like uh, I've said before, the Enfield one is the one that captured my imagination for this sort of thing. So I, I listen to all sorts of podcasts about paranormal, Ouija boards and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm Googling poltergeist and ghost cases and 
all that jazz all the time just to try and find one I haven't heard of before because it's typically Enfield, 30s Drive you get the odd one like the Sally House in America which we'll have to talk about on another episode so mm, another yeah. highly haunted place um, but then I came across this one called the Battersea Poltergeist so Battersea for people who don't know is in London or on the outskirts of London there's a very famous power station or disused power station now Battersea power station I think it's probably flats and housing estate now um, they've also got a very famous dog's home and pets so Battersea dog's home uh, for rescue um, animals so it's quite a main part of London Battersea's a um, quite a well-known part of London as well and this takes place back um, before the Enfield um, poltergeist right. quite a lot before um, and this one is in um, 956 so it's quite a way back and one of the good parts of this is but even though it's so old the main person in it she's actually still alive <clears throat> and she's been able to tell her story she's 80 now a lady called Shirley and at the time she was 15 so that, that common theme mm-hmm. of um, pubescent yeah. girls yeah yeah and as I say the, the, the couple we spoke to they've got a 15 16 year old daughter Enfield haunting Janet was around 13 and 15 by the time it was all, all fizzled fizzled out and it does tend to base itself or this activity tends to lend itself to houses where there is um, a daughter a, a girl of the household that's around 13 early teens to mid teens and it all seems to center around them so this Battersea case um, the strange one about this is normally they last for about 18 months two years and they sort of fizzle out which I think yeah. I mentioned in the Enfield haunting this one lasted for 12 years Jeez. so it affected the house and the family to such an extent that it lasted for so long and so basically what happened was that um, the girl Shirley um, she teenager typical sort of teenager uh, family so there's an older brother they've got the mum the dad dad's working class um, so nothing out of the ordinary typical house very much like Enfield um, so she she comes home one day Shirley the daughter and she finds a silver key on her pillow no reason for it to be there Right. can't figure out what it's from doesn't seem to um, be for any part of the house and they, they've obviously lived there for a little while just appears out of nowhere no idea where it's come from from there um, and that is the beginning of 12 years worth of weird stuff okay yeah so th this case as well is one you can google it and you will struggle to find much more on it i've i've looked into it and i can give you some some brief timeline of events but not into the kind of detail like the enfield one was purely for the fact that it happened beforehand there wasn't the big media interest to begin with around yeah. the event and it isn't that well known so so the family none of the family can recognize this key then all of a sudden um, over the preceding sort of weeks um, they start being woken up by loud banging which is typically how a lot of these start Enfield Park guys they started hearing banging all over the house um, and it, it tends to be a way that it all seems to start it's centered around the the girl of the family then the banging noises started so it gets so bad that the neighbors are outside saying what the hell is going on in your house 
to cause all of this. And there's people next door and the door down. <laughs> Cannot. Jesus. Yeah. So it's super weird, super loud. But the family don't realise it's quite as loud as it is until the neighbours start saying, look, we can hear it. What the hell is going on? And it sounds like it's coming from all over. They, they can't seem to pinpoint where it's all happening. It could be ceiling, could be walls the next second. Again, very similar to like the Enfield poltergeist. They can't pinpoint it. It seems to come from everywhere and nowhere. Um, then it all starts to focus on Shirley herself. Um, things start moving, clocks fall off shelves, a chair actually flew, flew, th flew through the air. That's easy for you to say. Um, but one of the weirdest things that happens is that on the bed, all of a sudden some, a pile of tea towels catch fire on Shirley's bed. Mm. Almost burn the house down. Um, um, Shirley gets pulled from the, the bed itself covers get ripped off um, they basically said they could hear scratches coming from like, underneath the bed on the headboard that kind of thing um, and the dad obviously not sure what's going on basically says is it you doing it Shirley and she's like no it's not me He's like, right, that's good enough for me. I believe you. But everybody's pointing the finger at her, saying you're you're doing all this weird, weird stuff. Yeah, yeah. It all all seems to centre around you, that kind of thing. The weird stuff that starts to happen from there is this guy comes down, um, a guy called Harry Hank. He's a medium, um, and this is back in the time when spirituality was quite popular. It wasn't necessarily seen as weird to be contacting the dead all that kind of thing so they start to hold a seance in the living room with shirley a load of people um and they get a knock on the door and it's the police the police turn up to basically say we understand you're trying to summon the devil and somebody's grasped them up and they don't know who this is but somebody's grasped them up for holding a seance because of all these things that are happening to her so anyway, they t try and tell the police what's going on and they're not trying to summon the devil, all this kind of stuff. And it's a spiritual thing and part of spiritualism. Um, so a lot less crying to worry about back then or something. Yeah, I think so. I go think out. So. Can't yeah. get out for anything nowadays. I know, I know. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's, it is rather strange. It is rather strange. Um so basically they they sort of kind of put up with it there's a lot of finger pointing Shirley gets bullied at school they're basically saying that you're you're doing it all yourself and whatnot dad's having none of it but obviously they don't really know what what's causing it then things take a slight different twist um they the local press and the national press get involved and this is a time when there's like there was the Enfield there's no internet there's no reason for um, Shirley to have known previous reports of stuff going on in other houses so it's one of those things that you don't yeah you could search the internet now for for hauntings and you can find loads of history on everything but back then there was no way you could um, the strange thing happens they they get the, the press involved and it's almost dismissed they're saying stuff's happening while you're sort of do it everything centers around you you must be doing it <clears throat> at one point they get Shirley to she gets picked up by this car and it's one of this press guy um, he takes her off and they get to the the newspaper offices in London and she's like why am I here what are you, what are you doing they, they say oh, I just want to talk to you and they try and get her to 
commit to the fact that it was her doing it all along. There is a particular, um, like a bone cracking type sound that some people can make with their toes and that's quite allowed and they seem to think that that is the diagnosis is that she's making these noises by cracking her toes to right. make tapping sounds and they're like that's ridiculous that's ridiculous so this news reporter comes and spends the night with Shirley this woman she brings her husband who's um I think it's military it might be police but so he stands guard outside the ha outside the bedroom they go into the bedroom nothing seems to be happening the reporter says I want to believe you but I can't and she says right we're in bed together so it's a female and the, the child like the, the the daughter and she says I want you to put your hands in front of you and I want us to you to put your legs in between my legs so she can't do anything basically and she says that to go and it's just to make sure they're not doing anything then they start hearing sounds underneath the bed scratching sounds and Shirley says to the reporter he he's here covers get pulled off the daughter gets dragged off the bed while the reporter is in bed with her so she's like look I know you're telling the truth and if that wasn't weird enough letters start arriving written by this spirit itself who they've named <laughs> Donald so okay, Donald okay. Donald is the name of the poltergeist starts writing letters to the house and one of them it says surely I come um, that was apparently the first one that was written on the 22nd of March and it's signed by Donald himself um, very strange I've got some photos I can put those up um, the grandmother who lived with them as well was convinced that this Donald call him Donald from now on was an evil spirit and threw holy water over Shirley trying to cleanse her as you would probably do it uh, didn't work but apparently at that point Donald went berserk crucifix that she was holding went flying across the room uh, curtains were left in shreds as if somebody had got a knife to them so it's just riled up this spirit even more um, so Shirley's growing up at this point she was unable to get a job she obviously finished school at this point she lost all her friends and she managed to get a job through a friend at Selfridges in London big department store yeah. um, but she was working in the tailoring section of the soup place soup section and she was responsible for helping to tailor garments so if people come in and said I want my trousers taken up or taken in or let out she would yeah. be part of the team that would do the alterations to people's clothing Donald followed her to work there are reports of objects just floating across the room scissors being stolen and it and just disappearing it got so bad that she was actually fired from her job because of the amount of stolen scissors that were taking place did, did other people like colleagues see yes this is happening yes so there is a witness has gone on record recently that says I remember everything happening that Shirley said at the time things were flying around the room in Selfridges so people knew it was happening and obviously yeah. it's quite dangerous to have scissors flying around everywhere yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but there was definitely things happening at work and not just in the house so it was following Shirley around and there was hundreds upon hundreds of letters being sent. I think in one day there were sixty letters that were sent by Donald to the house, and it's so like they, they just through appeared. the mail service. No, they just appeared just... in the house, right? And it couldn't have been Shirley because she, at that point, was still employed at Selfridges. 
So these letters were just appearing. There was a door in the house, a room, and they locked the door with a one. It had one key. They locked the door, so nobody could go in there. They'd unlock it, go in there later, and there'd be a letter or weird things have happened in the room, and there was no way anybody could have got in there without access to this key. So super weird she would get boyfriends and they wouldn't last that long because obviously donald would have his say um but this lasted on and off after that for it was intense for about two years and then as she got a bit older out of adolescence and moving on towards 17 18 she started moving out and things sort of fizzled out the family um, in 1965, so this was about eight years after it all first started, nine years, um, she moved out to Bognor Regis from London with her now husband, um, but Donald followed them. Um, he'd leave messages telling him, telling her, sorry, what her parents were doing. So um, basically he would snitch and send these letters to or make these letters appear to Shirley and Bognor Regis about what her husband and her parents were doing it's basically right. a grass so he was like trying to either protect her or intimidate or latched onto her because one thing I was thinking about earlier was all these pot guys seem to be male figures attracted to prepubescent and pubescent girls young women and i don't know if that's a bit weird it is a bit weird it is weird anyway but it it seems to be either like a a protecting role and they don't want any other man to have them they want to be the the person to look after them as such but it backfires because they intimidate them and scare them and this oh, yeah. one sounds like quite stalkerish compared yes, to very stalkery. The other, the other ones. That's yeah. what I, that's like sort of overriding thing that I, sort of I get think, from. Yeah, I think if it was now and it was a real person, they'd have restraining orders out. Yeah, it's that that kind of weird. Um, then after a couple of years, Donald fell silent. Um, he left a final message with the parents, bearing in mind this is in London and she's in Bognor. And for people outside the UK, Bognor, Regis to London's what, two or three hours, I would say, probably. Maybe to the centre of London, might be slightly more. Don't, don't really. It's Bognor, Regis on the south coast and you've got the south east is where, where London is. And Bats is quite central London, I thought, just outside central London. Um, but he did leave a final message with the parents um, saying that he would leave the family in peace and just said goodbye. And that was it. The key was never found again. They never found what it was for. No, no, never found what it was for. It sort of went missing uh, along the years and they never found it. Never found what it was for. Never found out why Donald was there. Um, and as... As I say, in most cases, it lasted a couple of years anyway, but this was 12 years before he went silent. Um, it's very strange, very strange. And as I say, about 300 metres away, down another road a few years before, was another poltergeist. And they don't know if that was called Donald. But one of the previous people that died in those houses was called Donald weird as yeah. these stories are very strange um that's pretty it's, weird. It, i think the weird bit is where well apart from the fact you've got a pole ghost in your house is these letters appearing out of nowhere well so like, did they keep the letters they've been yeah there's a few examples of or... them i think there were so many of them that they didn't keep them all but i do have a photograph so this is a photo or an image of the first letter that was written by Donald. It's very shaky writing. It says, surely I come. 
Right. Because I think that like, obviously the lighter side of it makes it more human than other yes. stories. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you sort of think like, is it somebody somehow messing with yeah. her? Or I guess I can see why they put the blame on to Shirley. Yeah. They also um, tried to blame the brother as well. But she was like, for part of it, he was actually abroad while some of this was happening. So it couldn't have been him. Um, but there are, yeah, I think when it gets so weird that people tend to say it has to be, there has to be a rational explanation to this and it has to be you, unfortunately. Um, like with the Enfield, girls on the Enfield case, they actually admitted to doing some of it. Yeah. But Shirley has always maintained that she had no part in this whatsoever. Um, and third party people witnessed it in Selfridges where she was working. So, yeah, that adds a lot of uh... it. Does the, the problem is, and a psychologist and that will tell you that eyewitness accounts are probably some of the most unreliable accounts of what's happened because yeah. yeah. you remember in the last time you remembered it. So, a lot of the time, you're not actually remembering the, the event itself. So, yeah, super weird, um, but very interesting case nonetheless. Um, I see, like I said, it's gone for so long, it's a long time to sort of keep. Mm-hmm. In and out of the house. Yeah. That's the weird thing as well. Uh, it did get press attention, not quite to the level of the Enfield one, but this was um, some time before, so that was 77 the Enfield, this was 56, so it's nearly 20 years beforehand, um, just past well, like 10 years after, 11 years after the end of the Second World War, so still still quite old, um, and the spiritualism was quite a big thing back there, so it wasn't so much of a weird thing that people were doing seances and stuff like that in houses, because that was a way of entertaining um, there was many people that were spiritualist mediums. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's very strange. Uh, and I know there's been work done to find out if there was a tube station underneath the house or a tube line gone underneath the house that could have caused some of the initial bangings. There wasn't. Um, there was some deep holes there that were there was some works previously done there so it's possible that it could be having a more natural occurrence the banging but the the report was the banging was so loud that the next door neighbors were hearing it and the next door to them so interestingly the house doesn't exist anymore i was gonna ask that was my no, question is it still there so. no it's not um but the, the road is, but the house isn't um, itself. Uh, like we're 70 years down the line now. Yeah, yeah. It's um, regentrification and all that kind of stuff that they do in, in developments and, and old houses now to bring them back up to date and, and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a strange case. It's, it's a little known one, but if you Google it, Batsy Poltergeist, there is typically one source of information for this, and it's through the BBC, and they've done extensive research into it, and there's quite a lot of information, if you're willing to put in the time to to look at that, uh, and listen to the stuff they talk about, but uh, an interesting case, and it's slightly different to the Enfield one, um, which was like um, massively recorded there was lots of people involved with that lots of credible people um whereas this is slightly before all of that yeah um but sent us around a girl of the family it seems to be a male poltergeist or male spirit that's either protecting or stalking or thinking they're taking care of or looking out for these girls when in actual fact, having quite the opposite effect. And yeah. I think it, it did affect Shirley 
badly as it did with the girls on the Enfield case. Janet was traumatised by that for a while. Um, so, yeah, interesting case. Yeah, cool, cool. So, yeah, that that's that's all I've got in terms of Poltergeist this week. Uh, <laughs> so we've got the two interesting ones, and I, I will go back to uh, and update everybody on the um, the local one that I'm looking into. Yeah, look uh, as and when I can get some more details to share then I'll, I'll make anything I can get public especially the photographs the photographs I think are an absolute key piece of this um, and if I can get that picture even if I can just get to show you Ash for the time being I'll, I'll yeah. try and get a copy of the photo um, yeah it was literally handed round on a mobile phone so we couldn't even take a photo or or whatnot so but as i say i've got the voice the whole recording of the interview for that and it's it's definitely an eye-opener as to what's been happening very strange but a normal family living in a normal house on a new estate so but as we talked to them we also said that it doesn't matter what the house is it's what was on the land before that and where we are um in our area oxfordshire itself is quite a um so haunted county there's a lot of old buildings so oxford castle and oxford university there's been an oxford university site there in the center of oxford for over a thousand years um oxford castle itself has got history dating back a thousand years so there, it's steeped in history in this area there was lots of battles back um back to like um william the conqueror and those kind of um yeah ages so like nearly a thousand years back there's battles raged on the local area where i i live as well there's um plague victims in the local school and the local school's like 400 years old um they kept plague yeah. victims there so there's all manner of weird stuff that happens around the area where i am um so yeah it can happen in normal houses that's the scary thing so it is like you see in the horror films yeah and, this, and a lot of these stories if they were a script they would be a horror film um i watched the enfield haunting on sky one which is a three-parter with timothy spall and it's super weird especially when you know the story is super weird um yeah and to to know that it's all fact whether it's true it's never matter but it's, yeah, it's definitely yeah, facts it, it about happens. what's happening to people yeah they're experiencing it like we've mentioned before one person's experience doesn't necessarily mean it's the same as somebody else's um and every experience is personal to to the person it's affecting so um who who's to say these things aren't happening so yeah, that's it so yeah, that that's me for this week. Sorry, I've I've been talking for oh, that's fascinating. for some time, um, and it'd be interesting it really to hear. If, yeah, yeah, uh, and it's strange that the more you look into it, the more you see the common things happening in each one, and they're not. These people aren't linked to each other; they're separate events happening sometimes. So this recent one is now. The Enfield one was forty years ago. The one before that was 20 years ago for this this particular one the battersea one and they've all got similar themes in them and they're completely unrelated um the enfield one they very unlikely would have known about the battersea one it might have been in the press and only the mum would have known about it i would have thought and she would have probably been fairly young at the time yeah it so, is, yeah so, yeah like say 20 years yeah and Janet, who was in the Enfield one, she was like 13 at the time, says so no way, she wasn't even alive in 1956. So she couldn't have even known. There was no crossover. So who knows? Who knows? Fascinating. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's it from me. Um, I don't know what it... I don't know. <laughs> I'll cut that bit out. <laughs> I think... That, that takes us about an hour. Yeah, I think a lot of this is about 10 to when we started recording. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's a fascinating one. 
do we want to just do a, a last little bit about um, what's coming up so we've got that interview tomorrow don't know if we can talk about that I suppose we can um, yeah, could you drop in about voting as well yeah yeah we interview interviewed by Panel Mad Magazine who yeah. are running the podcast yeah. awards yes vote for yeah. us you got a week and a half two weeks yeah I've even got my mum voting now She's actually messaged us. I can't send it. It's not submitting. I'll try again tomorrow. It won't even go on my iPad. So that's what she's doing. Um, he doesn't okay. know it's so good. You press the button, you press submit, <laughs> and that's it, Mum. You don't need to do any more now. It's like my mum, like, I was like, exactly like, it's just there. Like, what do, you, what, what do you mean? It's easy to do it than not do it. I don't even know. I don't even know how you get in these pages. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's the worst bit. It's like, what? How are you even getting to that? <laughs> cool. Right. So, okay. So we just finished that bit. Cool. So we've got following on from all of that. So stuff that we got coming up soon. Then Ash, we've got tomorrow. So Wednesday, which will be the podcast is releasing today. So we're we're recording it on the day of release, uh, which is cool. Which means that anything we talk about is actually happening in real time. So tomorrow evening, yeah. we are fortunate enough to have been invited for an interview with Paranormality Magazine. Yeah, and people may know and have heard of that because they're the ones doing the podcast awards that we are nominated for. Yeah. Are we? Best, best alien UFO podcast. Yeah. So, and considering we talk a lot about paranormal, like ghosts as well, and UFOs, and we're up against some dedicated UFO ones, I think we're, that's really cool. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Like I say, the ones we're up against are like UFO specific, mm. as we're like broad, obviously do feature heavily UFOs. So. Yeah, absolutely. It's absolutely. Good to, be, good to see us alongside those names, really. That's, yeah definitely so if anybody two weeks left two weeks left yeah to drop us a a quick vote if you haven't already and if you do and have thank you very much if you can thank you very much in advance and share it as well that's uh, yeah share it you never know no absolutely i've even got my mum to vote for it this evening as we've been recording this episode and she has just come back to me and said she's unable to do it not even been able to do it on her iPad. Um, she is 70 something and she isn't great with technology. But when you go onto the link, which is on our show notes, it's literally one box and press submit. And how she's managing to fuck it up, I do not know. <laughs> but that's my mum all over. <laughs> so, yeah. So, everybody get sharing would be massively appreciated just to be nominated was cool we don't even know that happened we might find out tomorrow and then if we can share that interview we'll we'll also pop that out as a bonus episode maybe um if we can um and then we've got ash's event coming up with ufo identified uh, where you can still get tickets to the conference at www.ufoidentified.co.uk. Yeah. Thank right. you very much. I got that right. <laughs> <laughs> you can also head over to the Facebook page as well um, to keep up to date with who's on there, um, who's speaking. Got some great people there, people that have been on the podcast previously. Um, so, yeah. yeah, crack on and get yourselves involved. That'd be a Tickets great day. Yeah, tickets are flying out. Um, it's not yeah, not too many left, so get by in if you're thinking about it. Yeah, definitely. Lunch is included, and there's a bar, so Ooh, not a free bar though. Not a free bar, definitely. <laughs> it's expensive enough putting this on. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, get involved, and as ever, if you have any paranormal experiences, UFO experiences, please let us know. Um, one thing I do want to just discuss before we go, and it has been annoying me this week, I'm not going to lie, is lens flare. 
So we talk, we've spoken about lens flare on previous episodes. And sorry to go on a bit of a rant at the end, but people need to understand how photographs work and camera lenses work. Especially people, mobile phone cameras. Especially mobile phone cameras. And the iPhone is probably one of the worst ones as well. So if you take a photo, particularly at night, it does happen in the day, and there's a light source in there in front of the camera, the chances are that you're going to experience some kind of lens flare in the opposite quadrant of the photograph. And it will almost be exactly the same position, but the immediate opposite quadrant. So if it's bottom left-hand corner, it'll be top right-hand corner in the photo. Yeah. Directly, so if you take a photograph of the sun, the sun's in front of you, you will see on the opposite quadrant of that photograph, more than likely, unless you can angle it properly on your phone, you will see a lens flare. On an iPhone, it's typically green or maybe blue, and I know they're working on that from a software point of view to change that colour. But people are putting those photographs up on social media and they're not accepting that it's an anomaly caused by the camera lens itself. Lots of people go on there and we get called negative. We get called that we're moaning and criticising people's photographs. We're not. We're trying to explain how cameras work. Yeah. So and like it say, annoys I... the fuck out of me. <laughs> Every day you can go on to certain pages and it happens. I tag you in some of them, Ash. <laughs> yeah, because what, what happens is like I'm super, super laid back and mm-hmm. I'm not in any way a troll or anything like that on Facebook. And as and, I'm not. And I'm in so many UFO groups, paranormal groups, mm-hmm. and so many of these lens flares get posted as pictures of UFOs, which is fine. Someone mm-hmm. took a picture. They may specifically yeah. join the group to say, I've, saw, I've looked at my photos afterwards and I've captured this and we know what it is. Most people say, yeah, it's lens flare. They explain what it is. Okay, thanks. Didn't know about never heard of that before. I've learned something. Then you get others that, like you say, will not accept that it's lens flare. They would then start saying they saw it with their own eyes. That's why they took the picture. All this crap. That's when I just don't hold back. It's like, you're, <laughs> I'm like, you're lying. Like, yeah. stop lying. Like, yeah. it's fine if you don't know. And, like, and people, I, I, I always comment, it's lens flare. And, like, there's a quick explanation of how it's caused. Mm-hmm. Like you can you can line them up with the like lines on the picture to show yep. it's exactly in line, like I say, with the light source in the picture. You explain all that and they're like, that doesn't explain us with my own two eyes. Like you didn't, you didn't see your own two <laughs> eyes. I'm gonna call you out because you're lying. Yeah. Trying to make it look like you caught this picture. I've had people uh, so not long ago, probably about six months ago, there was a, a couple, a young couple on Facebook, and they, it was a cropped picture initially. So I was like this is an edited picture. If we, mm-hmm. Can you show the full picture? It was show a light source. They obviously edited yes. out the light source. They were like, nope, so our own eyes. They then set up a crowd, a GoFundMe page yeah. to buy themselves a telescope and a laptop so that they can take more pictures of UFOs. And they wanted a thousand pounds on this GoFundMe. And I was like, one, telescope is not thing to be looking for ufos no. um, unless you're the worst type of equipment you could use to look for a ufo <laughs> um and to why do you need like a 500 pound apple computer to, <laughs> to do these photos <laughs> and then um, when they like they like point things like you can't use this picture without permission if you want mm-hmm. the right to use this picture you can like contact those and it's like it's a picture of lens flare love like yeah i don't want to like no, a dick nobody wants your, it like Stop lying. They're like, we see our own two eyes. That's why I took the picture and stuff. It's like, no, yeah. you didn't. Just, I'm like, say you get called debunking. Yep. I get people saying to me, why are you in this group? You don't believe. I'm like, I mm-hmm. do believe. Like, <laughs> I, put, <laughs> I put, you knew how much I put into this sub topic. Yeah. It's like, you're yeah. telling me that I, why am I in this group? I don't believe. It's like, I do believe, but that is landslide. Yeah. What's the point yeah. in pretending that it's anything else? I've put up that. I want nothing more than to believe that that is a real Yeah, I would love that to be, yeah. Yeah, but I know that you need to rule out any uh, respectable piece of reasoning as to what that is. Then if you can rule out everything else, what you're left with has got to be the truth. 
but if I know that every photo that I see almost daily, well, it is daily, multiple yeah. times a day, yeah. across all the groups, these lens flares, um, orbs as people are orbs. calling them, <laughs> it's not. You just see where the light source is and look at the exact opposite quadrant in the photograph and it lines up perfectly. Edge of the photograph, top to bottom, side to side. It's almost a flipped mirror image up and down of that. Yeah, and other people like, who, who are like these really like ones that I call the ultra believers because they use mm -hmm. any any light in the sky is your fault. It's alien crafts, yeah. it's mother ships and all this crap. And they're like, and they're like, yeah, it's a, don't even I think one rant I know, I know that I, I know think that's... one rant is enough for this episode yeah <laughs> like, we started on TR3 <laughs> fuck my life oh, <laughs> but people I've like go, I've seen you go wild on social media <laughs> um, but yeah people like crop these pictures of lens flare and then zoom in and invert the image like oh it's definitely a solid craft it's like what are you even talking about so conversely in the paranormal groups you get exactly the same there is a picture today and there was some guy who does removals of houses and he sells takes photos of the objects that he's selling and then sells the contents of the house uh, there is a type of put a camera what the, the job is they're like house clearance people and they sell on everything on behalf of the owner or yeah. buy the buy the contents and sell it themselves and there's a photograph of a mirror with an old school frame on top of like a, a chest of drawers or a unit a desk and the light source is off off the camera is take is a flash off the camera absolutely it's a mobile phone he's not standing in front of the mirror for obvious reasons because the photograph would show him in it that's fine he's trying to sell it but there's a smudge on the side of the photo uh, on the side of the mirror and the flash has highlighted this smudge and the amount of people that said they can see fo uh, see faces, people, that this smudge is. And I'm like, it's a smudge. They can see the light source. It's He put it up there by hand because it's not affixed to a wall. It's a smudge. It's The flash has highlighted the smudge. And people are like, no, it's evil. I can sense evil in the photograph. So you might sense evil, but that's not what's in the photograph. That is a smudge. It's a fingerprint that he hasn't wiped off, and the light source has caught it. You can see the light source just to the side of it. You can't quite see it, um, see him because he's at an angle, but the light source is there. And you would not believe the amount of people that will not accept the fact that it's a smudge. I get notifications on my phone to say this person's commented on the the photo you're commented on, or whatever. And they're all going, I can see evil faces. I can definitely feel the presence of evil. And you can, I, it's definitely a small child. Or I can see two people and that's that thing. It's a fucking smudge. I can see it's a smudge. Everybody else with half a brain, respectfully, can see that that's a smudge. But I don't troll either. But some things, lens flare, and seeing things that are blatantly not what they are and not accepting the fact that's a whole nother yeah. issue. So, yeah. yeah. And, like, and like, yeah, to, and to re reiterate, like, it's fine if you don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. post Absolutely. Absolutely. But once you've been, like, once people have given explanation, just like, yeah. Ex oh, yeah, like, say I learned something, blah, blah, blah. But when people mm -hmm. just then start blatantly lying about yeah. Yeah. The, the story, whatever, that's why I'm like, mm -hmm. no, you can yeah. go fuck yourself now. I'm, Absolutely. I'm not, the, I'm not gonna hold the lens that. flare's a classic one, though. It's, they get posted multiple times a day a lot of people comment there is lens flare and then you get all these people saying oh i hate all these people come on and say lens flare when it's not always lens flare well, it is always lens flare and, and we know that because we take photos i've got a dslr camera i do video um, photo editing and i do video editing myself i take photos we've discussed it i've taken photos of the sun directly in front of me so you can see a light source and this yeah. artifact like you can even watch like it's not even like, like jj sort of abrams phones. does it jj abrams yeah so specifically watch... puts those in films when the light source is in front of it to make it look all cool and it can look cool yeah and even like even like i like say like hollywood movies or tv mm. shows 
when there's the sun or car headlights or something, the lens flare is there because it's just an artifact of the yeah. sensors in the camera. It's yes, and this is like multi million pound productions mm-hmm. that have still got lens flare on the pictures. Yeah, yeah. But it's not a UFO. It's yeah, literally a camera artifact. I can feel another angry episode coming up. <laughs> it's some episode of rants. I think that might. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think, I think I need it at the minute. I think. Yeah. I think so. But yeah, that's sorry. So that was one thing that 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 I picked up this week on social media that's really annoyed me. But um but yeah, if anybody's got any personal accounts they want to discuss with us, um wanna come on flare. happy to argue lens flare till I die. <laughs> but yeah, if keep sending messages to us, we get contact from people. We do um, read all the messages um, and we're more than happy to to help out, have a chat on or off record. Yeah, so yeah. get in touch. Hope you continue to keep enjoying the episodes. we coming up to a year now. Can you believe that? We're just over nine months. We've got the year in December. Yeah, it's insane. Um, and we've been trying to get at least one out per week since December. Well, on we, average, we, we've done more than one episode a week, you yeah. include the bonus episodes. Yeah. And if there's any topics that people would like us to talk about, let us know. Because we're always open to talking about subjects that, that people want to listen. We we pick these topics and we pe- pick each episode um, based on stuff that we've been looking into or stories that have piqued our interest. But if there's anything that people want us to look into and talk about yeah, more than happy to to do that as well yep i was open to learning i've learned quite a lot of these past couple of podcasts yeah yeah so yeah. i didn't know anything about as i've learned quite a lot and you, you you can definitely see a trend of the activity starts with banging noises girl and it escalates from there so so yeah another episode done thanks for everybody listening And as ever, stay safe and get in contact. And we'll update you on where we are with the um, UFO conference and also the paranormal stuff that I'm involved in in the coming weeks as well. Awesome. Catch you next week.